This bread is so easy. I saw it on Instagram. I mentioned it to my daughter. I mentioned it to a friend. Yeah, no, they've been doing it for years. So I gave it a try and I have to tell you, it's so easy, it's so good. I've made it several times now and my goal is to maybe make it once a week. And I wanna share it with you in case you have never seen this done before. All you need are four simple ingredients. Three and a half cups of bread flour, two teaspoons of salt, a packet of instant rye yeast, and one and a half cups of warm water. Now, please don't ask me why I didn't put the ingredients in the bowl before I put the arm on the mixer. I don't know. I realized that just about now. But I went for it, I still did it, and it would have been a lot easier just to put it in the bowl first, I know. But all I'm doing is putting all four ingredients in the bowl, and I'm gonna mix it until it forms a ball and it's very sticky. Yes, I'm putting the water in saying, why didn't I take the arm off again? But I still went for it. And I was traumatized recently by flour going everywhere on another recipe. So I'm gonna get a towel just before this gets started. Once I make sure the coast is clear, I remove the towel. Now that the bread dough is sticky and in ball form, I'm going to take it off of the mixer and I'm gonna cover it and let it sit for three hours. Now all I'm going to do is put a little flour on my board, drop the dough on there, make a soft ball, and I'm gonna then put it in a Dutch oven on top of some parchment paper. I've mentioned before, I like to crinkle up my parchment paper, especially when I'm using it in items that aren't flat like a cookie sheet. It just takes to the form a lot better. So what I'm gonna do is put the, the bread or the dough onto the parchment paper, and then I'm gonna put it into the Dutch oven, and then I'm gonna put that into an oven that's preheated at 450 for 30 minutes. I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna do a little egg wash on top, keep the cover off, I'm gonna bake it for another 10 to 15 minutes. Actually, on this batch, I did it at 13. I don't know, that's just what I did. And you take it out, let it cool, and then enjoy. I am cutting off the extra parchment paper because when I made these before, it just burnt too much and I just figured, why not cut it off? And it worked out great.
I wish you could smell this. So good, so easy. Well, here we are, a rainy Sunday morning, and I was getting ready to do some deep cleaning, but smaller projects. And near the end of the summer, I like to get the house ready for fall. And I was going to go and clean my coffee pot. And I went to get one of my little squares of SOS pad or my little steel wool pads. And under my sink was a mess. So I ended up pulling everything out. And this is when I'm glad of ADD because I was able to shift gears quickly and then I'll get back to the other project. But all of this was under my kitchen cabinet and it was so disorganized because I was piling things in, including my little ring cleaner here or my jewelry cleaner. And I had a list going of things I need to buy, such as dish pods and Lysol and things like that, or any other brands that you know I would get. I found some of those products tucked and that fell down under the sink. So one thing I'm going to do is find a home for a lot of things. Like I had way too many cleaning rags taking up very important space. I also had way too many sponges. I actually was buying sponges. You know, I forgot I had some. And I was also getting ready to make a little bit later some scented baking soda to use in the carpets and some cleaning. Well, I have a box here but I'm going to be making my own so that I know it's a natural essential oil and baking soda and nothing else. But like I said, I just went to get a steel wool pad and this is what happened. But now that I have the steel wool pad, I'll probably jump back into cleaning out the coffee maker and putting my vinegar in it because our coffee this morning just wasn't tasting its best. I'm going to be showing you also how to find possibly things in your home that could be stinky, and how to prevent things from becoming so. But I can try to keep a handle on things like the trash bin. I have never been a fan of a trash bin inside the house that is in a cabinet. A lot of times it will just ferment even over a couple days and inside the cabinet gets stuck with a scent the plastic barrels get stuck with the scent, even with the trash bags. So I'm gonna share with you what I do for this, but I have a secret that I like to use. And while I'm thinking about that, I'm gonna go right to it. So when I'm cooking, and let's say I'm making salmon and I serve it without the skin, I'm not going to throw the skin here in the bin, especially if we're a day or two away from going to our transfer station and I'm not going to put it in the garage when it's hot out because it will get stinky. So what I do and what I have in my freezer is a designated bag. In the bag, actually I wrote on it, it might be worn now, it says toss. And every single time I make something that could potentially be stinky in the trash, it goes in my toss bag right in the freezer and then it stays there until we go to the dump with our bags of trash. So that has been a huge help for me. So what I like to do before I put my trash bag back into the barrel, I put some folded newspaper and then I sprinkle some baking soda. Reason being is if by chance there is a little bit of moisture that comes from the bag, this will help soak it up. But also the newspaper will soak up a lot of odor and then you can just recycle this when you're done. And then also the baking soda will help absorb some of the odor and will help absorb any of the moisture that leaks from the bag. So this is something I have been doing for years and it has been a huge game changer when it comes to cleaning out and keeping scent out of a barrel. I'm gonna jump in and do the carpet deodorizer now and then I'll show the coffee maker cleaning after. I'm right now getting ready to make my own carpet refreshener. And what I'm using are some essential oils. And before I go on, I wanna mention something about using essential oils or oils in general in your homekeeping. Now, if you're using it in, let's say, a vinegar water blend, or let's say even um, 
with oil. So if you wanted to do furniture polish, if you look up a recipe or I can share some later, you don't want to use a lot of essential oil because it can eat through finishes. So if you use too much, you'll ruin your furniture. So it is a very, very careful balance of how much you use. And also only use essential oils because the others that have fragrances added, it's not a natural product. And once again, it could not only affect your furniture or your carpets with some color issues or health issues, and some essential oils, animals are not good with them either. So you might wanna do a little research. I'll try to do some before this video is over. But I did find this information on the American Kennel Club website that some essential oils are poisonous to dogs. This includes oil of cinnamon, citrus, pennyroyal, peppermint, pine, sweet birch, tea tree oil, which is also melaleuca, wintergreen, and lang lang. These oils are toxic whether ingested by mouth or spread on the skin. Now I will be using a citrus in my baking soda blend here, but it will be put down, Willow won't be near it, and it will be vacuumed up, and we're not actually spreading it on her skin. So when you're using essential oils, and if you have pets, you might want to do a little research with that. But all I'm going to need is baking soda, a bowl, your essential oil. I have a metal spoon so that the oil isn't soaked up into a spoon like wood. You could even use some sort of disposable spatula or something plastic. And for today, I'm just going to use a container. Now, my thoughts are, I wanna get another flat lid once this is off, and I can drill tiny little holes in it. And then when I go to use this, I will just swap off a lid with the hole for a solid lid back and forth, versus my going out and buying a shaker container or something. All I'm gonna do is put it in this and put some holes. You can use a nail, you can use a little drill, and then a second lid to keep it airtight once it's made. So right now, all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start with just a cup. I think a cup will fit into that. So I'm gonna do a cup of just a baking soda. This is what I used earlier. I'm just using up probably the rest of the box from when I did the coffee maker cleaning and the sinks. It's going to be very close. So I'm just gonna pour the rest in here. Okay, so that's, let's call that a cup. And then I'm going to put 15 to 20 drops. And I'm probably gonna go with the lesser of the two. I'm gonna do 15 drops. Here I have organic grapefruit, white grapefruit and organic orange. I couldn't decide which I wanted to use, so I'm gonna blend the two. So first I'm going to do, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little, squirts there. Some of these don't have little stoppers either, so it's hard to figure out how many drops. And when you buy a dropper, they're great, but the oil can eat away at the rubber dropper part. I have that somewhere. Yeah, this is what I was talking about with the stopper. It actually ate away at that rubber. That one's called lemongrass. This one is grapefruit. It didn't seem to do it to that one, but these are not essential oils. These have fragrance, and boy, it does smell different versus the, the organic ones that I had here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so it's probably a little bit more, but we have a lot of baking soda in here. And once again, this is not gonna go on my furniture. I'm just going to use this on some of my carpets. I'm just gonna mix this together really well. I have some little globs of the oil. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any of those. Oh, this smells really good. Orange and white grapefruit. I ended up purchasing these online, but you can also get them at health food stores very easily. But make sure it says essential oil. Or it doesn't say fragranced with, you don't want that. I showed you all of the cleaning supplies under my kitchen sink, and I would really love to go a lot more natural, which over the years I have done more than I ever have, and um, I'm pleased with that decision. Easy, yes. Time consuming, a little bit. 
worth it. I do have a light colored wool rug that I'll be using this on and I don't want a little droplet of oil that would fall on it. If you did this a lot and liked it, you could even dedicate it to some sort of sieve and speed up this process of mixing. But right now I'm not in a hurry. I'm just taking my time, enjoying the scent, and it's actually making me think about fall. And that's why I have my apple candle going here. I put a little apples. I'm slowly adding touches of September. I'm not gonna say fall. Actually, I said fall, didn't I? But I'm slowly going to add touches of September, which is apples and some dried things that I forage from the yard and just slowly enjoying the season that's coming upon us. All right, so I do not see any more. Let's see here. Let's see if I can do this without it going everywhere. Wow, this smells so good. I'm probably smelling some of the apple orchard candle too, I just realized, but I'm smelling more orange and grapefruit. All right. Not easy, easy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go out into the garage and I'm gonna poke some holes in this with my little drill. And then I'm gonna have another cover that I'm gonna first use and then I'll just swap them out. And yes, there's times I absolutely use commercial cleaners, but the older I get, the more and more I'm trying to use natural products. They don't always work as well, but they're a lot healthier. So let's go clean that coffee maker and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to turn around here. All right, so let's head into the butler's pantry. And like I said, I started this and then I decided to share with you. So when I opened up the top, I noticed that I do have some scale here I wanna clean. And I'm on my tippy toes when I see this. I did not realize that coffee grounds from when we were putting it into the basket were getting stuck there because when I'm doing it, it's from this angle, I don't see it. So I'm gonna clean all of that up. I'm gonna take out my basket and the other part, clean that. I'm going to give the pot a good cleaning with the lemon like I showed you before. And this is what I started cleaning when I went to get my little steel wool pad. And let me show you what I have here. If you saw my past video, you've seen that I do this. But I like to cut my steel wool pads into quarters so that they last longer because I don't need a huge pad for something like this. So I have a little collection of small pads under the kitchen cabinet. So what I'm gonna be using is vinegar and I'm just gonna use a cup with the rest as hot water and then I will run it through and then I'll run pure water through two or three more times until I don't smell vinegar anymore. I'm going to use some baking soda along the bottom here. I'm gonna use a toothbrush and also in my sink, I noticed it was pretty gross around the strainer here, just from pouring extra coffee every morning down there. So I'm gonna take care of that once again with baking soda, a little vinegar to make it bubble, and then I have a very old toothbrush that I keep under the kitchen sink and I use that as well. I'll be using the vinegar and a little bit of lemon on the inside of the cup there, inside of the glass, and the top, plastic top I'm gonna take off and clean that, and give this coffee maker a nice fresh start and my Monday morning coffee is going to taste so much better. I want to make note that even though it's always plugged in when you're making coffee, I do unplug it when I'm touching all the mechanisms and giving it a good cleaning. So it is unplugged. Now you may have seen, I had a very large container of vinegar there on the counter. I poured some in this big bowl. I'm even gonna add some hot water. I ran my hot water first, because I'm gonna use hot water to run through the coffee maker too. And I'm gonna put 
the screen in here just to give it a good cleaning. Make a big paste with the lemon juice and a little bit of the vinegar. And I am keeping some pressure against the screen. I don't want to stretch it out or pull it out from its seam. So I'm just cradling it with my hand. Look how much better that is. This is so satisfying. I already cleaned up that little bit of wet grounds that were in the corners. going to take off the top here. I'm going to give this a good cleaning. But first I'm going to go inside with my lemon juice and give this a good cleaning also. I'm doing the screen. I'll just give that a swirl. You don't have to do this in such long detail and steps, but it will make a difference, I guarantee. You could throw this right in your dishwasher, but that works well, wonderful too, but I've never got it as clean unless I do this little step. And I'm gonna use a very wet, you want, oops, I'm gonna use this one I have. You can use your still wool, but make sure it's very wet. You don't wanna scratch your glass. Having it wet is key. It's better already. Nice and clean. Now, once again with the toothbrush, just to get inside the holes here, I'm just gonna quickly dunk it into my vinegar water solution. I'm going to pour my vinegar. Like I said, you could use four cups of vinegar in this. It's fine. I might even do two now that I'm seeing how dirty this is. Just a moment. Let's get, I got this at the grocery store, big container. It's usually on one of the bottom shelves. I'm gonna do two cups. And then I'm gonna add hot water from the tap just to do the first run. While that's running through, I'm going to work on cleaning the drain here. Very gross down inside. I don't know if you can see that, but I have some residue left over, like I said, from pouring coffee out every morning. So I'm just gonna go with my lemon. I don't have disposals in this house, so I'm gonna make sure I don't put it down the drain, but if you have a disposal, cut your lemon up and put it in there and that also helps with the smell from any residue or gross stuff that's stuck in your disposal. Getting in the creases. And I'm going to do the same, especially underneath. A lot of times, a lot of stinkiness can get caught right inside the rubber gaskets on your sink strainers. So I'm going to make sure can see how dirty that's getting. I'm gonna make sure I also get all of this cleaned off. Pour baking soda down the drain. This is all nice and safe for your septic. I'm gonna leave some around the edge, but I do wanna get quite a bit down inside. I'm just gonna pour this in slowly just to give it a chance to bubble inside. And try to clean off anything that's right near the tops of the pipe. Let's get pouring it slowly is key. You don't want to wash it away too fast. Your kitchen sink will love you for it. Now I'm in the butler's pantry right now, but I'm going to do the same for sure because that's connected to our dishwasher. And I wanna make sure that I'm cleaning food that might be stuck from the dishwasher as well. And I'll sh I already cleaned that last week, but I'll show you how I took it apart and cleaned that. 
Now I'm just going to follow up with this solution of the hot water I had before and vinegar just to give it a rinse. So much better. And so while doing that, this delicious pot of vinegar is almost ready. And then I'll clean it out. I ran water through two more times. Our Monday morning coffee was so much better and no skunky burnt coffee smell from the heating plate. Now I'm going to show you one of my favorite little tools for cleaning around the house. And it's this. Now some of you might recognize it. You can buy them in hardware stores. One of the main purposes is if you drop, let's say a bolt or a screw somewhere, you can stick it inside like a car engine or a little corner and grab it. This is perfect for cleaning shower drains and sink drains. If there's like hair or something or something that is grabbable, you just put it down the drain when it's closed, open it up and grab the hair and pull it out. And yes, many times I feel like I'm pulling out a shrunken head, but then afterwards, it's perfect. So this is one thing, I don't even remember what these are because I've had this for so many years from house to house. But like I said, you can get them at the hardware store. I'll try to look up the technical name for it. But if you go in and ask, it's usually for grabbing little items like screws or nails or something that's in a hard to reach spot. This one's having a hard time closing. I need to maybe a little WD-40. I even used this the other day for cleaning some dryer lint out of the dryer. Yep, love this. Well, I had a lot more I wanted to show you regarding cleaning, but family things came up, fun family things, all good and I prefer to do that versus cleaning. So I will do another video. We'll have a part two, probably a part three down the road, but I just wanted to share some of those steps that I do here in our own home. Just a little shop news. The limited edition Halloween box will be available online September 1st, 2024 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I've been adding a lot of new and replenishing items and I'm glad to say that more pheasant, fox and stag tankards are being made for us and we hope to have them in our warehouse by the last week of September, possibly the first week of October. As of today, the fall and Christmas boxes for 2024 have sold out, but check back often to see if someone decides to cancel their order at the last minute. If that happens, they'll be put back into inventory. Well, I thought I'd share just a little bit of the chaos putting together some of the boxes. I just picked up this shelf at a store next door that's closing and it's working out perfectly for us to group things by number. But my daughter's over here folding boxes. Some of them will recycle and some will be going to recycling. But it is a bit crazy and busy in here and messy. Well, kindred spirits and new visitors, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next Sunday. Bye now.